Hey guys, Allison here with a complete guide for all of the diary related things that were added in the 1.2 update for Terraria. There are 14 different basic colors of dyes. One of them, silver dye, can be bought along with a dye vat from the dye trader once he spawns in your world. You can get the dye trader to appear by carrying at least one dye ingredient in your inventory. Dye ingredients are used to craft each of the other 13 basic dye colors. Red dye is crafted from red husks, which are dropped by coach channel beetles. These spawn in the underground, and they are pretty darn rare. This is actually what took us the longest to find, so expect to have to spend a long time underground if you're trying to find enough of these to make a full collection of dyes. Beetles have 40 hit points and the same attack and defense as demon eyes, so they can actually be pretty tough for beginning players. You might want to get some decent armor and weapons before you try going after any. Orange dye is crafted from orange blood roots. These are plants that appear underground. Unlike other plants, they actually hang from the ceiling rather than sprout from the ground. All of the dye ingredients which are plants must be mined. They will not pop off if you try hitting them with a weapon. They can be placed again after removing them. Orange blood roots are not terribly common, but spend enough time underground and you should run across a decent number of them. Yellow dye is crafted from yellow marigolds which are found above ground. Like Daybloom, they spawn on grass. Due to yellow marigolds being incredibly common, yellow dye is the easiest dye to get, excluding silver dye if you've got enough money. Yellow marigolds can be placed after you pick them up, but only on dirt or grass. Lime dye is crafted from lime kelp, which spawns randomly in water. It's possible to find it spawned in water anywhere in the underground, but it's most common in the underground snow biome and rare other places. Lime kelp is a plant, so it can be placed, but only in water. However, if you really want to place it somewhere that you don't want water, then you can put water there, place the lime kelp, then drain the water, and the lime kelp will stay. Green dye is crafted from green mushrooms, which spawn randomly underground. They can be pretty hard to spot due to their size, but if you keep an eye out and know what you're looking for, they shouldn't be too hard. Green mushrooms are plants that can be placed on pretty much any solid block. Teal dye is crafted from teal mushrooms, which also spawn randomly underground. These mushrooms are much easier to spot than the green mushroom. As you can see, they're much larger. Both mushrooms aren't very common to spawn, but if you're underground for a while anyways due to looking for ores or other underground things, you shouldn't have much of a problem finding enough. Cyan dye is crafted from cyan husks, which are dropped by cyan beetles. These beetles spawn in the underground snow biome, and like the Cochiano beetles, they are both very rare and tough opponents. The good thing is, though, you can farm lime kelp in the same biome, and there are also plenty of interesting things to explore down there while waiting for cyan beetles to spawn. Sky blue dye is crafted from sky blue flowers, which are found on top of and inside the jungle biome. Though these are flowers just like the yellow marigolds, they can actually be placed on pretty much any solid block, and are not limited to simply dirt or grass. These flowers are pretty common, but can be difficult to reach due to the toughness of the jungle monsters. Blue dye is crafted from blueberries, which appear as bushes above ground. These are pretty common to find, but sometimes can be easily mistaken for a background item, the kind that just disappear and do nothing when you mine them out. Although blueberries actually look like berries after you pick them up, you can still place them as bushes afterwards, though only on dirt or grass. Purple dye is crafted from purple mucos, which is dropped by sea snails in the ocean. Sea snails are pretty darn rare to spawn, so expect to have to spend quite a long time underwater. As you can see we did here, it's pretty easy to carve out little air bunkers by placing blocks and then mining out the sand directly underneath them. It's a lot easier to wait in one of these than to have to keep jumping to the surface every few seconds to take a breath. Violet dye is crafted from violet husks, which are dropped by lac beetles in the underground jungle. Like the other two beetles, these are quite rare. In this video clip, you can see that we somehow caught two of them that dropped in at once, but we're pretty sure that was a once in a lifetime occurrence. Also like the other two beetles, these are tough opponents, but as long as you're able to handle the other jungle monsters, you should be alright. Pink dye is crafted from pink prickly pears, which appear at the top of cacti. These are not uncommon to spawn, and sometimes you'll even have one or two already in the world right after you've created it, but it does depend on you having cacti growing in your world. 
You can place pink prickly pears after you pick them up, but only on top of a growing cactus. Black dye is crafted from black ink, which is dropped by squid in the ocean. Squid are less common than any of the other ocean spawns, except for sea snails, but still decently common. This is good, since you'll need a ton of black dye if you want to be able to make all of the other possible dyes. If you're waiting in the ocean for sea snails, then you should find a decent number of squid while you are waiting. You can also, like we did, try to trap one to keep you company. So that's about it for the ingredient side of things. Stay tuned for another video where we explain how to make some of the fancier dyes and how they look on different outfits.